polygamy. Marry women of your choice, 2, and 3, and 4, is a very famous quote that most apologists use to answer the normal question about polygamy in Islam. These are the same Islamic apologists who insist on reading the context when debating with Christian evangelists. Why don't they use the same criteria on themselves? This is not a verse, it is only part of a verse which most use to distort its meaning. Let's watch a few video clips first, where people quote out of context. You laugh at us, I said the laugh is on you, the laugh is on you. Islam says, marry women of your choice by twos and threes and fours. But if you cannot do justice between them, marry only one. The only religious book on earth. The only religious book on earth which has the statement, marry only one is the Quran. There is no other book, religious book on earth which has such a statement. The Quran says, marry only one, if you can't do that. Of the Committee of the State of Women in Islam, on page number 66 and 67 of the year 1975, it says that the polygamous marriages done in India by the Hindus was 5.06% between 1951 and 1951. And the Muslims, though Muslims are allowed by the Indian law to marry more than one woman, the Hindus aren't, Muslims married more than one woman, the percentage was 4.31. Hindus 5.06, by law they aren't allowed. Muslims by law we are allowed, and yet 4.31. God knows if the law would have allowed, how many would they have married? So if you analyze, there's no religious scripture on the face of the earth, which says marry only one, except the glorious Quran. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 3, that marry women of a choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, marry only one, is only given the glorious Quran and no other religious scripture. The Quran has put an upper limit. Maximum that you can marry is four. You know, before the Quran was revealed, you know, people used to have tens and hundreds of wives. In this book, in chapter 4, verse 3, it's very clear about this subject. Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 3, and Allah says it. I'll give you more or less the translation. And marry other women. Oh! Wait a minute. And? Oh! How do you start a sentence out with and? You don't. Do you ever walk up to somebody, and my name is, what do you mean and? How do you start with and? So it means I have to go to the verse before it. Oh, verse 2, look at this. For the believers, the believers are being taught what not to do. You have to understand the way this came at the time. The believers were being told, don't do what you used to do. They used to take the yatim, the orphans, and if a little girl is orphaned, her mother and father are gone, whatever, then what are they going to do? They'll say, this is my wife. They would take a little girl and say, this is my wife. I'm taking this girl. Why? Because they want the money, the wealth. Not about sex. Come on, get that. You know. But they wanted to do that. So Allah said, don't take it and don't mix their money with your money, saying you're going to help them when you're really increasing yourself. Yes or no? Is that right? Then it said, marry other women. Marry other women. Not those orphan girls to get their money. Marry other women, ethna, talatha, arba, two, three, four. And already this was a shock. Nobody ever told the Arabs they had any limit before. They were like, huh? What? What do you mean tell me how many wives I can have? Well, you want to be a Muslim? If you do, there's a limit. It's never happened before. They could have a thousand wives. Nobody said anything. Uh, by the way, go look in your Bible. See how many wives Suleiman had. A lot more than four. Even I asked one of the Catholic sisters about being married. They said, the nuns cannot get married. I said, why? They said, they're married to God. I said, all of them? You have a problem with me? <laughs> what was that? But never mind that. It's another subject. But it says four, and that's the maximum. 
So some companions of Muhammad, they had to divorce their wives. They didn't say, oh, look, we can go get, well, they had wives. Nobody ever said something like that before. Yes or no? Hello? Yes or no? Then it says another limit. So you ask about limits, you're hearing limits all over the place. Don't take the orphan's kids' money. Don't marry these little girls that are not old enough to get married. Don't marry women against their will. Chapter 4, verse 19. Don't marry more than four. And it gave you, it didn't say like I said it. It said two, three, four. Why did it say two, three, four? Because two, three, four, if. Now it has a condition, another limit. If you can treat them all fairly. Otherwise, and here comes the biggest point, marry only one. Yes or no? Summary of facts that prove that the Quran does not promote polygamy. 1. Fa'in kihu, from the root word nakaha, can be translated as marry or give in marriage. From the context of surrounding verses and other facts elucidated below, it is only possible to be translated as give in marriage. 2. The verse addresses men and women, thus if it is promoting polygamy, even women can marry women by twos, threes or fours. 3. The verse explicitly refers to fatherless children or orphans, and a situation that where you find yourself in difficulty of taking care of them. If you're already finding it difficult to take care of orphans under your protection, would an all-wise, all-knowing, omnipotent God tell you to marry them? Think about it. If you cannot do justice to the orphans, and you find it hard to look after orphans, yows will give them in marriage not marry them, which is rather senseless. You find it difficult to look after orphans in the first place, how do you expect to increase your ability, by marrying them? 4. The verse does not say 2, 3 or 4. Rather, it is 2s, 3s or 4s as in groups. If it is polygamy that's promoted then you can get married to 4 women at a time. Marry four women a day and in ten days you can have a harem of forty wives. Thus, unless God is creating an environment for wholesale polygamy with orphans, it is telling you to give them in marriage. And God would have told you, marry any number of orphans as you please, rather than putting limits to the number you can marry at a given time. Explanation from Scripture and Context before getting into the scripture and the context I would like to discuss a word used therein. Fa'in kihu, coming from the root word, nakaha, which is the Arabic for marriage in the concerned verse. Arabic is a language to be taken in context alone and this word could mean marry or, give in marriage, depending on the context. It is common knowledge that the Prophet Muhammad was married to more than a new woman, According to Hadith is attributed to the Prophet, consequently the interpreters think that all Muslim men have the same privilege, since all our lives we have been taught nothing but to thrive in the Prophet's footsteps, that's a good excuse. But the Quran puts a full stop to that excuse by telling us it doesn't work that way, in chapter 33 verse 50. A privilege given only to you and not to the believers. We have already decreed their rights in regard to their spouses and those who are maintained by their oaths. This is to spare you any hardship. God is forgiver, merciful. Quran chapter 33 verse 50. The irony is, when the above verse is quoted, to any man who propagates polygamy, his immediate question is why is it allowed to the prophet and not us? You should ask that from God. Those who judge the scripture, the criterion, with external sources and concepts because they inherited those concepts, are measuring the yardstick with the cloth. Now to the scripture. O oh people, be aware of your Lord who has created you from one person and he created from it its mat, and sent forth from it many men and many women, and be aware of God whom you ask about, and the relatives. God is watcher over you. And give the orphans, al their money, 
and do not replace the good with the bad, and do not consume their money with your money, for truly this is a great sin. And if you fear that you cannot be just to the orphans, al Yathama, then you may give in marriage, Fa'in Kihu, those who are agreeable to you of the women, two, and three, and four. But if you fear you will not be fair, then only one, or whom you maintain by your oaths. This is best that you do not face financial hardship. Quran chapter 4 verses 2 3. If I simulate agreement with the swell propagate polygamy, this verse says only with orphans under your care. How many men actually marry orphans? And why do all those apologists and evangelists not read out the full context? Two words in the above verses have been left in the Arabic language because these are the significant words that most have interpreted unsuitably, intentionally or not. al yathama Arabic for orphan, or rather translated as orphan in the Arabic language, means fatherless children, not orphan as understood by an English reader. And they seek a ruling regarding the women, say. God will give you a ruling regarding them and what is being recited to you in the book regarding the orphans, mothers whom you wish to marry, but have not given them what west greed for them, and the oppressed from the children, that you stand for the orphans in equality. Whatever good you do, then God is aware of it. Quran chapter 4 verse 127. Where are the fathers of these so-called orphans? Well, there are no fathers. This verse has been mistranslated to say orphans, where it should be fatherless children. Which means if you have orphans under your protection, you have taken the role of a father who financially supports the upbringing of a fatherless child, be you man or woman. There is another verse that talks of marriage where older translators interpreted the word fa'in kihu as marry, and a quick look at the verse in context will show you that it means to give in marriage and give in marriage those among you that are single, and the good from among your male and female servants. If they are poor, then God will grant them from his grace. And God is encompassing, knowledgeable. Quran chapter 24 verse 32. Below are the verses in concern, broken down into several segments for ease of understanding. 1. And give the orphans their money, and do not replace the good with the bad. Two and do not consume their money with your money, for truly this is a great sin. 3. And if you fear that you cannot be just to the orphans, 4. Then you may give in marriage, fa'in kihu, those who are agreeable to you of the women, 2s, and 3s, and 4s. 6. But if you fear you will not be fair, then only one. 7. Or whom you maintain by your oaths. This is best that you do not face financial hardship. Quran chapter 4 verse 2 3. If you wish to interpret the word fa'in kihu as marry, it has to be fatherless children who are under your protection that you marry. Taking these verses from the context of the Quran, you can only understand it to give fatherless girls in marriage, twos, threes or fours at a time, but if it is difficult and you face financial hardship, only one, Think about it. These are fantastic teachings good for humanity, distorted by men with preconceived notions. Further proof that this verse says give in marriage. Most translators state this verse to say to, three or four women. The Arabic words used here are mathna, two latha, and rubar to mean twos, threes and fours, as in groups of twos, threes and fours, respectively. If it is meant to mean two, three or four the Arabic words will be ithnan, thalatha, and, arba respectively, thus the verse says marry them off in groups of twos, threes or fours. Mathna equals twos, not two. Whenever the word mathna is mentioned it is translated as groups of two or twos. Say, I advise you to do one thing, that you stand to God, in twos, mathna and individually, then reflect. Quran chapter 34 verse 46. But when it comes to the chapter 4 verse 3, miraculously it is translated as 2. Rubar equals 4s, not 4.
Chapter 24 verse 4 says bring for witness for in Arabic is our bar, not rubar as in verse chapter 4 verse 3 that men used to propagate polygamy. But when it comes to the question of women to marry, miraculous lith word for four is rubar which actually means groups of four or fours. Thus, the interpreters have completely ignored the context of the Quran and blindly translated the verse to suit their agenda of propagating polygamy. That is because of the preconceived idea of men having the ability to marry more than one woman, a concept that's been trailing through centuries and they cannot fathom the Quran, not to support their traditions. Is it a wholesale market that lets see who marry a thousand women? If the verse is to mean two, three or four the Arabic words will be Ithnan, Thalatha and Arba respectively. But if your heart is diseased with a traditional, egoistic need to keep your options of marrying more than one woman open, you will translate it as two, three or four. The reason is, this verse is telling you to give orphans who have come under your protection in marriage in groups of, twos, threes or fours, and then says if you cannot do justice due to financial hardship, then only one. If it is propagating polygamy, then you can get married to women in groups of twos, threes or fours, which means there is no limit to the total number of wives you can bring home. It is like a wholesale boutique, marry four at a time and in ten days you can have a harem of forty wives. Quran is not talking of polygamy. What if you are a woman with orphans? The biggest and most crucial point of the verse in concern is the fact that it does not say that the verse is talking only to men. Why do men think God is talking only to them? See the full context from the first verse and it is very clear that the verses are not addressing men only. In fact, men and women are addressed here and told how to take care of orphans. Read chapter 4. People, be aware of your Lord, who has created you from one person, and he created from it its mate, and sent forth from it many men and many women, and be aware of God whom you ask about and the relatives. God is watcher over you. Quran chapter 4. You can vividly see that the above is addressing men and women. We are commanded to take care of orphans and their inheritances if any, with honesty. God wants us to give the fatherless women and their mothers in marriage if we find it difficult financially. This great teaching has been distorted to enable men to marry many women, the irony being, even with that skewed idea, they don't marry orphans. The next verses. And give the women their dues willingly, and if they remit any of it to you of their own will, then you may take it with good feelings. And do not give the immature ones your money for which God has made you overseers, and spend on them from it and clothe them, and speak to them in goodness. And test the orphans when they reach maturity, then, if you have determined from them comprehension, then give them their money and do not deliberately consume it wastefully, or quickly before they grow up. And whoever is rich, then let him not claim anything, and if he is poor, then let him consume in kindness. If you give to them their money, then make a witness for them, and God is enough for reckoning. For the men is a portion from what the parents and the relatives left behind, and for the women is a portion from what the parents and relatives left behind be it little or much, a forced portion. And if the distribution is attended by the relatives and the orphans and the needy, then you shall give them part of it and say to them a kind saying. Quran chapter 4. If you read through the above verses you will understand what this book is saying, but if you are a person who measures the yardstick with the cloth, you are allowed to be illogical and egoistic. This portion of the Quran is all about orphans. There is no indication of polygamy at all. Everything is orphans, taking care of them, testing them to see if they are mature enough to marry, giving their inheritance, and of course, the golden part, getting them married, not marry them. Polygamy is not Islam, but a concoction attributed to it. Remove your dogmas. Just forget for a few minutes what you have inherited, watch this video again. And you will see clearly that the Quran is telling you to give orphan girls under your care in marriage, not marry them. Peace.